slipped away And I simply can't Longing just to breathe Hey everyone, thanks for coming to New Life Health Ministries Josh again, today we're just going to have a public service announcement to remind everyone Bow ties are cool Really though, we're going to be uh, back on fasting Looking at the some Bible-y stuff on it, going to Isaiah chapter 58. First, we need to talk about some context. Last time we talked about Isaiah, we already said some of this. Um, Isaiah is a book about what has to come before peace. First half, judgment has to come before peace. The second half is what we're at when we're looking at today, is that hope has to come before peace. So keep in mind our context for the subject of what we're talking about is hope. Who is the author writing to? Well, who is the author? Prophet Isaiah writing to some rich snobs. And, uh, yeah, in our immediate context, we're going to look at uh, Isaiah chapter 57. I'm going to go ahead and read to you verse 13. Yeah, no, weird voice voices. They're the best! Well, you know, except for both ties. 57, 13. When you cry out, let your collection of idols deliver you. You see that sarcasm? God talking with some sarcasm there, y'all. When you cry out, let your collection of idols deliver you. Let your McDonald's french fries and cheeseburgers. Let your football teams. Let your video games, your TV shows deliver you. And yeah, I know. I just hit home already. But yeah, idols. We all know idols in our life. I mean, I really do think a big proponent, I'm a big proponent of thinking that we're all, a lot of us are addicted to food because we worship it. Gotta get my McDonald's cheeseburger today. I have to have my coffee. We talk like a bunch of drug addicts like it's okay. Well, yeah, but we have to eat. Yeah, you do have to eat. But you don't have to sit down and worship your McDonald's cheeseburger. And ultimately, a lot of this junk food, like french fries and stuff, are going to cost you your soul. Because you're worshipping them. And then more than that, also because they affect your hormones. They affect how you treat other people. They affect your body which in turn affects your mind, which in turn affects your spiritual life. When you prioritize McDonald's or Subway or whatever, yeah, Subway, eat fresh, but have a lot of bread to ruin your mind. Sorry, I, I don't understand Subway. Although it is delicious. But the point is that all this stuff we choose, we're choosing it over God when we choose them. They are our gods. Sorry, a little bit of a rant, but don't let food be your god. Part of what fasting does is give you self-control. Control over that part of your life that you succumb to and just indulge in gluttony, which is a sin, because we all do that. Yeah, I know. Great message the month that Thanksgiving starts. Sorry, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, so don't worry about it. Anyway, back to the Bible. Finishing that, he says, The wind will carry them all off. Talking about the people crying to their idols. A breath will take them away. But he who takes refuge in me shall possess the land and shall inherit the holy mountain. Remember refuge. We talked about it in the Isaiah Apocalypse. It's when God takes his hand and carves out a place at Mount Zion, a place of hope for us to sit in. It's a place of peace, not a place of loudness and shouting, not a place of worshiping our idols. I want to remind everyone of Elijah. He, God found him a place in the mountain for him to keep safe. And he listened for God's voice, and he didn't hear it in the storm. He didn't hear it in the earthquake. But he heard it in the still, small voice. It wasn't a shout. It was a small voice, because he was able to find refuge in God. He got close to God's ear. And then Isaiah 57, 20, to finish up the context. The wicked are like the tossing sea, for it cannot be quiet, and its waters bring up mire and dirt. The wicked are like a roaring sea. They are loud, obnoxious, and just constantly making noise. You know what God's calling wicked? The people who have to pray really loudly to everyone. The people who have to be on the news and on the streets. Going, yeah, but Jesus told me to... No, no, G Jesus is in the still small voice. The wicked are the loud ones. And it's kind of like, um, I mean, we go back to... This idea, in, uh, going on to 58, I'm going to go ahead and look at that. Uh, verses 1 says, cry aloud. He's going ahead and says, go ahead and cry out loud. And he skips to 3, and he says, but then you ask, why have we fasted, and you see not, God? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you don't take any knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, the Lord says, you seek your own pleasure. This is because, and Jesus says it too when he talks about people 
fasting, man. If you go ahead and let people know you're fasting, if you're letting everybody know you're doing this and doing that for God, then God doesn't hear you because you're already getting your reward among men. If you want your reward among God, keep your mouth shut and speak with a still small voice. Get close to God's ear. Don't try and shout at him. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice be heard on high. The Bible says in verse 4, fasting like yours, the fasting where you're being loud and shouting at God. Yeah, God's just not going to hear it. Be as loud as you want. He ain't going to hear it. Going ahead and skipping down to uh, verses 6 through 8. This is my favorite part of this passage, I believe. This is God speaking, and he says, Is this not the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo the straps of the yokes, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. God says, hey, you know what real fasting is? It's not when you give up stuff. It's when you give your stuff to someone. You're fasting from food because you're too busy giving your food to other people who need it. You're fasting your money because you're giving money to those who need it. You're giving people a place to sit. God says, I'm not going to hear the person who's just shouting and all he's doing is not eating and saying, God, please hear me. God doesn't hear that. Do it all you want. Skip your meals and pray really loudly. God doesn't hear it. But God does hear the person who fasts and says, God, let me give my food to someone else so I can be closer to you. And God says, if you do that, then you're close to me and I'll hear you like a still small voice. I'll hear a whisper in my ear because you're close to me and I'll say, yeah, let me bring your health speedily. He says right there. He says, I'll meet your needs because you're close to me and you're whispering in my ear and I can hear that. You want God to hear you, don't fast and shout at him. Whisper in his ear. Think of it like an oasis. If you're in the middle of the desert, you're not going to stop seeing an oasis and go, Hey, oasis, come over here. Water, come to me. You spend all your energy yelling at this oasis and you die. When you could take that same energy and just go to the oasis. That's what God's telling you to do, man. If you find yourself in a place where you need to be fasting, which I think all of us should be fasting regularly, but if you find yourself in a place where you're desperate for God, if you find yourself in a place where you're broken, you're thirsty for His Word, don't shout at Him because He doesn't hear it. But go to Him and whisper in His ear. Go to the oasis. Get some water and drink. Drink from the Word of God. And He says, I'll bring you healing. I'll bring you what you need, and I'll protect you. That's God's fast. Isaiah 58, skipping back down, verses 10 and 11. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness, and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places. Just like the desert, in scorched places, God wants to be your oasis. And more than that, he says, if you want to be heard, give to the needy. If you want to be heard, you have to give. And he says, you can be a light in the dark. You know, we can be a light in the light all we want, and it doesn't do any good. It's already lit. But when we take our light and we bring it to the hungry, we bring it to the oppressed, we bring it to people who need what we have, that's when we're nearest to God, and that's when he hears us. Because right by his ear, we're saying, God, I want to be more like you. And there's some more verses I want to look at down below in the blog, but I want to take time to ask you all, think of God as your Father, as I, I try to do regularly. And, man, I, I, I'm not a father yet myself, but I know there's certain kids in children's church that I think of right now. And um, I imagine one of those little children coming up to me, and they're getting really close to my ears, sitting on my lap, and they go, Josh, I want to be more like you. I've... And they imitated me recently. I mean, they have the one kid that likes to do the King Bob! Because I did that like five children's church ago. I was using King Bob as an analogy from Despicable Me. It was hilarious. And he was like, King Bob! And I imagine that little boy coming up to me, sitting in my lap and whispering, Josh, I want to be more like you. Can you help me? You know what? Whatever he's about to say, I'm going to help him with. But if that same kid says, Josh, I want you to blah, blah, blah! And I don't, I don't care. I'm going to ignore whatever it is he said. But the kid who comes up and says, Josh, I want to be more like you. Can you help me? 
yeah, I'm going to help you. And God's looking at you, either those of you who are fasting and, King God over here! And he's going to ignore you because you're being like a little kid just shouting and throwing a tantrum and whatever. But those of you who go up to God, get close to him and whisper in his ear and say, Hey, God, I want to be like you. Can you help me? God's going to say, yeah, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you be like me. I'm going to help your health. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to do whatever I can for you because you got near to me. And that's what true fasting is biblically. We talked about it health-wise last week, but that's what it is biblically. You're not just giving stuff up. You're giving to people. And that's about all that I have for you today. It's Isaiah 58. Read the whole chapter. Read the blog down below. It's amazing stuff. And it'll change how you live. It'll change how you communicate with God. And that's what I want to challenge you all to do. Change how you communicate with God. By fasting in a way where you're not giving up, but you're giving to with that, I hope you all follow the blog down below. Comment. Let me know what you think. Share this if you think it's an important message. All that other good jazz. And remember, focus. It's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus. It's all about you. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. But it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus.